from toleratedcinematics.com and today we'll be showing you how to create wedding titles and this one specifically. Alright, so that looks very cool. If you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you want to support our YouTube channel, you can always buy the project files with the link in the description. We also have some other variations of wedding titles, so be sure to check them out with the link in the description. So for those that do want to follow this tutorial, let's fire up After Effects and get started. But before we do, I'd just like to mention that we will be using a plugin called Trapcode Particular to create these particles coming off of the side. So if you don't have that, you can't follow along with that step of the tutorial apart from that you will be able to follow along with everything let's open up after effects and get started all right so here we are in adobe after effects and the first thing that i will do like always is creating a new composition renaming this main comp making this full hd 30 fps and 300 frames long which means 10 seconds and there we go i will click ok once we are here i'm going to pick my text tool click right here and write Romeo and Juliet. And there we go. I'm going to change this font. I'm going to change this font to a medium right here. So I'm using Lado medium, but you can use whatever font you want. I'm going to set this to all caps. So we have something like this and set this at around 75 in the height and a little bit more spacing in between my letters. So we have a nice and modern text title. I will select my text tool, well, my regular selection tool again, go to align and center this out like so. Then I'm going to right click new and create a new shape. And then we're going to add a rectangle. Going to into the rectangle, I'm going to unrelease this anchor point and I'm going to make it a little bit wider and a little bit higher. Then I'm going to add a stroke to that path right here. We have a stroke. And there we go. And we can open up that stroke right here. If you want to, you can change the width, but I actually like the thin line here. Maybe we can change this to three and that's fine. Then I'm going to click back onto my shape layer and go to add trim path and open up that selection as well. Right here you can choose between the start and the end. I'm going to add a little bit of spacing. So I'm going to set this to like 10%. Then I'm going to offset it so that my middle, my center is actually right here where I want my year to be. Uh, so the year of when they're marrying. So I'm not sure to get this perfectly centered. We'll have to eyeball it like so. Okay, there we have the center. We can release and we can create a new text tool, create, click over here, 2017 for example, select your text and make it a little bit smaller like so and maybe even wider and then we click on our selection tool and just go to the align again and center it over the middle right here and there we have it. I'm going to set my resolution to full so we have a nice clean result. Maybe we can make it a little bit bigger, something like 40 or 35. And we can also use the arrow up and down to get it in position like so. Okay, so there we have it. Um, this looks already pretty cool. We can duplicate our shape layer like so. And go into this detail for the shape layer again. Go back into the rectangle. And this time we're going to make it a little bit thinner uh, on the height and on the width right, like so. So we get something like this. And then right here we can again go into the trim path and play around with these settings right here. So we can offset it a little bit again see what works and what doesn't. Uh, if you want the exact same length, uh, you can increase it right here a little bit and get it back into position. I actually like that it's actually a little bit shorter right here, so we have this kind of detail. Of course, you can go and add some kind of um, half um, values in here if you want it to be exact, um, but I'm going to close it down. I like it the way it is. I'm going to up my year here like so, and there we have it. So now we have this kind of animation. The first thing that we'll do is go to the end here and I'm going to click on the stopwatch for the end at the beginning of my timeline. And I will do the same thing for my second uh, shape layer. So click here on the stopwatch and move like two seconds further away. So that's around at 60 frames. I'm going to make it exact 60. And then I'm going to set this to 10 
and same for this one to 11. So exact this exact value you should take note of. Okay, so now we have this kind of animation which looks uh, pretty cool, um, but actually we want it the, the other way around and I overlooked it, but it's easy, easily fixed. I'm going to select my both uh, keyframes right here, I'm going to scroll down so I have all of them, and then I'm going to right click on one of these knots and I'm going to do keyframe assistance, reverse the keyframes. And there we go, so now they're going to be like so and they're going to build up until we have our final result. Then I'm going to select them again, right click on one of the keyframes and go to keyframe assistance, easy ease. Now we can jump into the graph editor. Easy is going to make sure that it's starting slow, speeding up and stopping slow again. So if you go into the graph editor and make sure right here if you click on this button that you're working with the edit speed graph right here, uh, we can actually select these knots here and we can actually select both of these and if you are going to bring this in it's going to be a little bit more of that um, yeah kind of easy ease effect and there we go make sure that these are the same and as you can see it's actually really simple to read it's going slow it speeds up really fast and then it slows down again and then we get this kind of animation if I trim my comp let's see so this looks really cool Okay, so there we have our result. Um, of course, you can also play with the um, layers. If we toggle off our graph editor right here, we can also play with kind of the um, the offset a little bit. And then one is going to be a little bit faster than the other one. So you can play with that as well. Okay, so now that we have this, we can close down these two shape layers and I will hold control and click on these shape layers. Go to layer, pre-compose them and pre-compose them as a title shape for example doesn't really matter and we're going to click ok then i'm going to make this a 3d layer so toggle on the 3d layer if you don't see this toggle the switches right here right click new we're going to add a new camera like so okay and right click new and also a new solid layer and we're going to rename this to particles now comes in the effect that we're going to use effect trap code particular right here I'm going to the emitter and I'm going to change the emitter type to a layer. Go into the layer emitter right here and I'm going to select my layer for the layer emitter to be my title shape. And I was going to look at these two thin lines to actually emit my particles from. Of course they're not going to be exactly on spot because the movement here is a little bit a little bit too much so I'm going to decrease this to 10 and keep it as it is right now and I'm going to increase my particles per second and also open up my emission extras and pre-run them for 100 and that's going to make sure that my particles are actually already spawning uh, once the shape is drawing on so now we have something like this and you can play around with the ink well with the particles per second so the more you add uh, the more intense your effect will be and of course if you jump into the particles right here you can lower down the size to one and maybe increase the randomness a little bit right here and increase this to something like 50,000 and now we have a lot of small cool particles it's going to add a lot more detail and as you can see it looks really cool like so um, they're currently actually just toggling off after a while so you can play with the side well, well with life here we can also add a little bit of life randomness and we can also go to opacity over life and just make them uh, ramp off we can do the same thing for life uh, size over life uh, maybe we'll let them come on like so and now we'll have something like this okay so I'm going to add something like a hundred thousand so we have a little bit more particles and maybe I want to increase my life to something like four so we have a little more again and then if we go down to the physics tab we can open up that tab and go into the air and then in the turbulence field and right here I'm going to affect my position for 100 and I'm going to set off the fade in time so set this to zero and then for uh, everything apart from that I'm going to keep it the same and let's see what this is doing so this is going to add a little bit of motion in there, not sure if I like it, so uh, you can play around with that, it's just um, giving you some options. I'm going to set it off for now and then you can also add a new adjustment layer if you want or you can add it to the particles themselves and rename that layer to glow. If you go to the effects and presets now, uh, you can actually download this for free on our website at the freebies page, so a link will be uh, in the description to our website and if you search for perfect glow, 
you can apply this to our adjustment layer. And if we go to the project manager and change this to maybe a 16 bits um, or 32 bits per channel, we're going to get a nice glow like so. So this is looking pretty cool. And then of course we can uh, lower the threshold a little bit and the intensity. And maybe change this to 10 in radius or five. No, well, that looks good, I, I think. Okay, so there we have it. And of course, I'm going to make it a little bit less intense even. So something like 0.02, there we go, or 0.03. Okay, so now we have a little bit of glow like so. Looks pretty cool. And now we want it to fade in a little bit better. So I'm going to click on my text layers like so, press T on the keyboard and click on the stopwatch for the opacity. Then I'm going a little bit more into time and change this while well, click on creating a new keyframe so if you click over here it creates another keyframe and go back to the beginning just set this to zero so now we have them fading in like so then right click new adjustment layer and I'm going to rename this to blur and if we're going to effects uh, noise and grain well what am I saying blur and sharpen it is going to camera lens blur we can change this to 25 and we can uh, create a new stopwatch right here press U on the keyboard, make sure that that keyframe is at the beginning and change it to zero and put this keyframe right here. Select all of these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistance, easy ease, and there we go. So now we have a nice smooth animation and let's see what we have as a result. All right, so that's it on how to create a simple wedding title. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it. And if you have any kind of result, let me know as well. And definitely check out our website. We have a lot to offer. If you enjoyed watching this video, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. See you in the next one. Goodbye.